Hi, I'm Dan Hernandez. I'd like to welcome you to this week's episode of Sport Fishing. Well, today we're back up in San Francisco Bay fishing out at Emeryville Sport Fishing for the new hook fish. What we'll be doing today is doing this, fishing down on the bottom, looking for rockfish. You never know what to expect. Might be some reds, some blue rockfish, maybe even a link pot or two. So stay tuned for this week's exciting episode of Sport Fishing. Welcome to Sport Fishing with Dan Hernandez. Tastes real good. There I got a fish going right now. We're just drifting out here along the coast, fishing along the coast today, not over at the islands, and I'm fishing with a magic metal jig on the bottom and a small B52 bucktail above. And we're getting a mixture of fish. Got a couple of nice reds so far this morning. A couple of lean cotton, I think two legals already. And this is my First or second fish of the day. Let's see what this guy is. Doesn't feel very big. Just wind it in. Fishing light line here. And it's only about 100 feet deep, so it's not very deep. What do we got? Ooh, nice rockfish. That's a magic metal jig there. Four and a half ounce. And a nice rockfish. All right, well, let's take a little break from the action and go to the tackle box and give you a good look at the gear we're using for today's type of fishing here aboard the new Huck Fin 2. This week in the Tackle Box, I want to talk to you about some new items that are coming out from Game Saver. Now the units, the silver unit's been out for a couple years now. It's a great unit, use it all the time. And what they've done differently is come out with some new bags. Now some of the things that they've done is come out with the new heavy duty bags, heavy duty roll material. And you can also get these in bags. These are really nice to use for if you have some heavier stuff or if you're gonna be freezing your game and fish for longer than two years, I'd use the heavier material bags. And then another bag that they came out with is pretty unique. They call it a dam bag. And what it is, is it has a little pad in here to absorb moisture. So if you're doing a lot of fish and it's freshly caught, might be a little wet, you might want to use this new bag from Game Saver. It has a food saver name on it. It's all part of the same family. 
but these are great bags to use. I'll just show you how easy it is to use. So I'm just going to take my fish, put it right inside the bag. And if you never used a game saver unit, they're just so easy to use. Everybody should have one. All you do is just open this up, slide it right into that little opening, close it, have it nice and closed. And all you do at this point is press the vacuum button. It's going to vacuum it and seal it all at one time. See all the air coming out of here. And just sucks all that moisture up into this little pad. And that's all there is to it. You don't have to cut anything. The bag's already pre-made. You just open it up and you're ready to go. What I'd like to do at this point is just write on here the type of fish I have in here and when I did this so I know when I put it into my freezer up to two years no problem. Usually you're going to go through your fish and your game a little bit faster than that but because you have the game saver bag you know it'll be fine for up to two years no problem. These are great to use and again this is just a brand new bag that they have. It gets all that moisture, absorbs it up here in the pad and your fish is ready to go. All you do is open it up and cook it. Now one other thing that I did do here, just as a little tip, I use a little um, cutting board. I like to put that in there when I lay my bags in and my product, my fish, my game, so it lays nice and flat. You don't have to do that, it's just a little tip. I like to do all the time and it works out really good for me. For more information about Game Saver, you can go to our website. We have a link there on our homepage. And you can also visit their website and see all the different items, all the new bags they have. Lots of great new items coming out from the Game Saver people, and you should pick up some. If you don't have a Game Saver unit, I really recommend you get one to preserve your game, your fish, up to two years. They work awesome. I also put my other fishing gear in there, too. But you really need to get one of these units. It's hard enough to go catch that fish, and when you have a successful day, you don't want it to get ruined. And Game Saver is really great for preserving your fish up to two years. All right, well, let's get back on the water and show you more exciting action right here on Sport Fishing. My name is Jay Okamizo. I run the New Huck Pen. Uh, we're up off of Point Reyes um, and we're checking out some of these reefs, um, looking for looking for rockfish and link cod. Uh, so far, we've just been jumping from uh, spot to spot trying to find uh, some biters. There's been so much krill uh, feed out here that there's a lot of fish but they're not biting so we're just jumping from one rock to another uh, trying to find a, a, a spot of fish that'll that'll bite uh, for us and we can uh, load them up <laughs> oh, okay. oh. no it's got light it got light oh, you know what? This thing, that thing's gonna pop out of there too i told you not to do that or... i know just want it to fall Got a nice vermilion rockfish. So we're using uh, shrimp flies with uh, tipped with anchovies, hitting the bottom, cranking up six or seven turns, and letting them, uh, letting the rockfish climb onto the bait. There's so much uh, feed out here that we have to use a little, little bit of uh, the anchovies to attract them. Uh, normally they just bite the plain flies, and this is what we have. I got a fish going here. I'm not quite sure what I got. We'll see. This fish in light line. I went to all monofilament right now. 20 pound test. It's hard to believe we're rock fishing with 20 pound test, but up here you can. Let's see what I got here. Oh, there he is. 
Yeah, it's one of those you gotta release. It's canary. We can't keep these guys. You gotta let them go. Pulp its gold bug. All right, we'll try it again. Thank you. My hook's on your line. Oh. But, there, boy. Well, that's a nice red. Well, who got it? You did. It's on my... Uh, it looks like you got it. Okay, guys, let me reset the boat. Wait a minute. And get back on those fish. You got one. Wait. Down to wait. Never catch a fish. When I catch it, gotta release it. <laughs> Can you explain that to me real quick? Just show it to me. Tell me why you can't keep them. Oh, this is a canary. Um, it's a fishing game regulation. Supposedly they're low in numbers, so just let them go. That's what you want to catch. This is a B52 bucktail, half ounce model right here. And I just had an anchovy pinned on there. And we got a couple nice fish going over there too. But this is a quality fish. This is what we're trying to catch. Beautiful red snapper. Fish would cost a lot to go catch in the market or go buy in the market. In a restaurant, it would cost a lot. It would be a delicious fish. Well, let's take a little break from the action right now and go to the galley and show you how to cook up a delicious red snapper like this one. For this week's galley segment, we're in the kitchen of Shelter Cove Lodge here in beautiful Craig, Alaska with Neil. He's a chef here. And Neil, we caught that red snapper today. It's a beautiful fish. And a lot of people in Southern California catch red snapper. Not quite sure what to do with it, all those types of rockfish. You're gonna do dish first today? I am. We're gonna do, with your Baja style fish batter, okay. we're gonna do a little beer batter. Cool. So what I do, is I don't like to put it in just plain flour. Mm -hmm. So you're not adding any flavor to it. So I, I'll use some of your fish batter mix. Yeah. Dredge red snapper right in there. When you use flour or something, you know, flour-like, uh -huh. it helps the batter stick to it. It adheres to it, and it keeps the batter from dispersing all throughout your pan and falling off what you're trying to coat with the batter. Cool. Okay, now what do we do? Now, make sure our oil's hot. Right. To check if the batter is going to fry and cook when it hits the oil. Just take take whatever utensil you're using, take a little drop of batter and put it in, and there it goes. Oh, that pops right up. Pops right up, bubbles. That way it's not gonna stick. That's a great test. Now today we're using red snapper, but you could do this with any sort of rockfish or rock cod? Any sort of, any sort of rockfish. And just give it a nice little shake. Now when you're frying fish like this, deep frying it or pan frying it like this, can you still make the mistake of overcooking it? Like I often can, it's a lot harder to overcook it this way. Because of all the batter? Because of the batter and the oil is a more or less a, a moist cooking method. I mean, you can still dry it out, you can still do damage to it, but this is a fairly safe way to do it. And once it has a nice brown, crisp color to it, then we know it's done? Uh, you're gonna to wanna to wait a few more minutes. Let it cook uh, three or four minutes on each side. So you make sure that all the way through is cooked. And people don't have to have a deep fryer. They can just do it like oh, this. You can do it on, over, over medium heat on your stove top. Mm -hmm. Or there's, there's several household fryers that I'm sure are available at your local market. Oh. That looks great. It smells great. There's nothing like fresh fish. Absolutely not. So this is the fried dish that Neil just did. It's the red snapper that we caught today, but you can do any rockfish at home and do it with. And the batter he used was real simple. It's our Baja style fish batter. Uh, you can add beer or water to it. And I'm gonna go ahead and sample it with one of my dipping sauces, sweet and spicy. This should be delicious.
Delicious, isn't it? That is so good. Uh, fresh fish. And I always like the fish batter, but this is a different way. I've never quite done it this way before, where you just use the batter first and then use it as a full batter. Right. That really makes a difference. I can see how it holds on a little bit better. Absolutely. Well, this is great. You can find these products on our website. If you want to try a dish like this, come visit Neil down here at Shelter Cove Lodge. They'll be happy to take care of you. He's got great dishes. It's more than just a fish camp. It's really a wonderful resort with a full kitchen, full restaurant. Neil will be glad to take care of you. Well, let's get back on the water and show you more exciting action here on Sport Fishing. Oh, it's no good. <laughs> That's why it felt so heavy, it was, it was yeah. spiraling up. You got him from underneath the rock. <laughs> we, we can keep his, we can't keep mine. Yeah, this one. That one's got to go back. That one's got to go back. Okay, I got one too. <laughs> The link cod, they have to be uh, 24 inches long. Uh, right now, you're allowed two. This guy's got a couple years to go. <laughs> he's, uh, he's probably about 18 inches. How big is that? Uh, about five, five, six pounds. Yeah, I got the good one. Those are two. What you don't want to catch, and <laughs> this is what you want to catch. He ate that magic metal jig, just a nice little bite like that. It's a great fish. It's a, looks like a Johnny Bass. You can see he really wanted, he got two of the three hooks right in his mouth. Probably had three all at one time. We'll go ahead and uh, just take the hooks out of this guy and drop it back down. Well, we'll take a little break from the action. And when we return, I'll be giving you this week's tip of the week. For this week's tip of the week, Jay, the owner operator of the New Hug Fan and myself will be giving it. And Jay, it was really obvious today, and you pointed out a lot, that the hot tip was if you didn't get bit in the first couple minutes, you needed to wind up and check your bait. Yeah, it's... Uh... When the, the fish are full on krill or whatever type of uh, feed that's out there, um, they're focusing on, on live bait. So if you don't have a, live, a good live bait on, um, immediately, right after you hit the bottom, if you're not getting bit within the first minute, you have to crank up and check your bait, put a new bait on, and send it back down. Is part of that because the guys are dropping that one pound sinker down there so fast. In some places we fished today, it was less than 100 feet of water. So that lure got down there, or that bait got down there really fast. So once that sinker hits there, the line's still going off, yeah. and the fish is hitting it right away and they don't feel it? Yeah, there's a little bit of slack, and if they don't crank up the slack right away, they don't feel that initial bite, uh, they, the bait gets yanked off. Yeah, and that's a good tip, because Jay was talking about that all day today. If you don't get a fish, or you don't get bit in the first minute, that means you probably already got bit and you just didn't have any bait. That was a really good tip. And the other thing I noticed today is I was lucky using artificials. I used the magic metal jigs and the bucktails that cut all my fish. But uh, what was the, the key there? It's just some of these, these larger fish were, were targeting the bigger baits? 
Um, well, it's how you work the jigs. And experienced fishermen like yourself can work the jig, work the bottom, be able to, to work the bottom without snagging up and feel that bite. And most of the time they bite a jig on the sink. Right. So. And I got some nice reds today yeah. on both baits. But one good important tip is to bring a variety of bait because up here with all these rocks, you can go through a lot of different lures. Yeah. Lots of hooks, lots of gear. Have every color and every size and uh, you should be set. Well, thanks, Jay. We had a great time fishing. Thanks, Dan. You know, Jay runs a great operation. If you've never been up to the Bay Area, he runs out of Emeryville Sport Fishing. You can look for him on the websites. We have a link on our website to Emeryville Sport Fishing. And he's also on Facebook. So you can find out all about his operation. San Francisco area is just an awesome place to come fishing. We're right at the Fairline Islands. Just a beautiful location. Great place to come fish. One of my favorite places to fish in the whole world. Well, I'm Dan Hernandez, hoping you enjoyed this week's episode of Sport Fishing. And I hope you join us again next week as we go looking for more of the best in sport fishing.